This week I'm driving the 2022 Kia Niro EV. The Niro EV was launched back in 2019. It's a nice mix of an hatchback with an SUV, but the technology we found under the hood of this EV model dates back to three to four years ago. We'll see on the road today if uh, this old technology can still compete with the latest EV on the market. Under the hood, we can find an electric motor <laughs> and it looks like a gasoline motor. Uh, this motor is good for 201 horsepower, 291 foot-pounds of torque. This engine is matched to a 64 kilowatt battery and we can expect a range around 385 kilometers. All right, I'm gonna test the acceleration with the Nero EV. We've got almost 300 foot-pounds of torque. Let's see how it does. The Nero EV's got a hard time to manage its torque. A lot of that power goes to only one wheel. Um, it should be managed a little bit better, you know, a little bit like a, a limited slip differential. Um, this week I had a lot of issues with this same situation. So if you've got the traction control on, uh, too much power, it, it doesn't go anywhere, you know. <laughs> and if you remove the traction control, it, it just really spin away. You can do a burnout, even if you're on dry tarmac. Uh, so uh, a really bad uh, torque management <laughs> uh, in this system. On the road with the Kia Niro, it's pretty surprising, you know, on the road. It's really comfortable. Perfect uh, little electric car to go from point A to point B. Uh, obviously, the handling is not super sharp. Nothing like, uh, you know, the Mustang Mach-E or something from Tesla. Uh, but I think uh, the focus on this uh, Nero, it's really the comfort, you know, using this on a daily basis. Uh, it's not about the driving dynamics, it's really about the comfort. If we take a look at the exterior design, <laughs> it's not the most appealing uh, vehicle on the road. It's really not my cup of tea. Uh, I feel, you know, uh, they could have done something better. Uh, I, I like, you know, they're using a gasoline model and convert it to electric and uh, this Nero doesn't look like an alien on the road just like uh, the Nissan Leaf or something like that but still you know we've got some touches all around in uh, light blue uh, that's all you can tell it's an EV Nero I don't like those touches from my point of view these little color touches look like something you could find in an entry-level car uh, to appeal the younger generation of driver and nobody loved those kind of like details once again you know it doesn't look better than the normal model so those light blue touches it's a no-go for me but once you step inside of the Nero it's something else it looks good it looks like a normal car it doesn't look like an alien electric car uh, we've got some buttons we've got a normal screen uh, it's easy to use it's practical really comfortable comfortable seats that's a big surprise this week telling you the truth i'm more comfortable inside of this nero this week than the lincoln corsair I had last week got more space for my shoulder my legs I like that metal console here everything works well uh, it's easy to shift and drive and reverse so we got heated and the climate the seats also heated steering wheel a place to recharge my phone wirelessly everything works pretty well easy to use uh, my gauges in front of me it's easy to see the range remaining also uh, how many percentage I've left in my battery I can also have an EV mode on my screen to have more details about the EV situation. Um, 
really easy to to use and i really like that you know sometimes when you step inside of an electric car especially my key and tesla and all that everything is on that big screen and yes it looks good but sometimes it can be complicated for nothing and not really useful especially in the winter time with gloves We've got also some paddle shifter uh, behind the steering wheel. Uh, these are really to regenerate, uh, you know, some power back to the battery. So when you want to slow down without using your brakes, uh, you can use those paddle shifter. It's pretty cool. We've got a bunch of modes also we can switch from to help you uh, maximize your range. We've got the eco mode, the eco mode. Uh, it's really like a one pedal kind of driving. So when you let go your gas pedal uh, it starts to break by itself you don't have to use the, the brake uh, in many cases but still by utilizing all those gadgets and those modes you can add some extra uh, kilometers to your range stepping in the back of this Nero plenty of space comfortable uh, it's really well made inside of this Nero uh, because it's still built like an SUV you've got plenty of space and uh, it was pretty surprising this week to see the space uh, behind myself and also uh, my wife when she put the baby in those rear seats uh, actually we had more space <laughs> like once again inside of this Nero compared to the Lincoln Corsair I know the Corsair doesn't really compete with the uh, Nero but still just giving you an idea how well it's made inside of this Nero if we take a look at the trunk uh, plenty of space in that trunk and you don't make a big sacrifice even if you're choosing the ev model by choosing the ev model only a cubic feet of space is sacrificed so uh, kia has been doing a good job you know uh, positioning those battery underneath uh, the nero even if it's based on a gasoline model usually when you're uh, putting an EV powertrain on a gasoline a model, you have to do a sacrifice on your cargo, but it's not really the case with the Nero. On the recharge time, uh, uh, if you're using a level one, 120 volt uh, normal outlet, you can recharge fully the battery in about two days and a half. <laughs> So that's about like more than 50 hours. If you're using a level two, 240 volt, uh, it's gonna take you uh, nine hours and 35 minutes. And you have the access to a level three DC charger. You can recharge your battery up to 80% in only an hour and 15 minutes. So pretty decent, normal numbers on that side. Well, one thing I was really surprised this week because I don't have a level two charger at home. Usually when I have a full electric vehicle, it's pretty hard for me to have a full recharge, especially when I'm using the car on a daily basis. But uh, from all the electric cars I've been testing, I was really surprised because this one really recharged on the level one. I'm not sure if it's because this one's got a, a cable with some electronics. There's a box who really manage the electricity and all that. But this week I was really surprised. I didn't have to use a level two charger. Just plug it in overnight. Just by using my level 120 volt normal outlet at home, I was able to have a decent amount of range all week. Obviously, I didn't do the 385 kilometers of range. Uh, Kia is saying you're able to do it uh, with the Nero. Obviously, it's winter time. It was cold this week, maybe minus 15 degrees pretty much all week. You have to expect around 30 to 40% uh, person, uh, less range when it's cold. But still, uh, all week I had a decent 250 to 280 kilometers of range and I was really surprised because all week I was just recharging this Nero on a normal outlet and um, it wasn't the case with all the other electric cars especially the new generation of battery when you plug it in uh, on the normal outlet and when it's cold it's just useless price wise a uh, base Nero AV will uh, start around forty six thousand nine hundred and five dollars Canadian and the model I'm driving this week is good for fifty six thousand eight hundred and forty dollars 
um, you know base price it makes sense it's a good price obviously these prices are without any incentive from uh, the uh, federal or provincial rebate um, 46,000 from my point of view makes sense you don't need all the bells and whistles inside of this Nero the sunroof and all that the letter uh, I think for uh, you know daily use uh, driving uh, in the city uh, it makes sense 56,000 now with that kind of price we start to play in the Mac E Tesla Y territory and obviously for this kind of price I would prefer a Mac E or the Tesla I think both looks way better and they're way much more fun to drive a lot of people are worried to drive an electric car uh, during the winter especially here in Canada like I said you can expect 30 to 40 percent uh, less range when it's really cold uh, and this week you know I had some issues with the traction I think the way the Nero managed the torque and tried to put it to the ground it puts way too much power to only one wheel uh, it needs to behave a little bit more like a limited slip differential especially with close to 300 uh, foot pounds of torque instant torque uh, you need a little bit more power to both wheels uh, when you just want to do a quick acceleration off a corner of a street uh, if you've got the traction control on uh, it's just super slow and kind of dangerous and if you remove the traction control it just really lose traction and it just spins away even if you're on dry tarmac it lose the traction and you know Kia needs to really improve that traction control also one thing the recharge port is in the front maybe it's practical for a lot of people but you know winter driving the highs the snow and everything and sometimes it's hard to open that little door and that little door seems kind of cheap uh, I'm sure uh, with time that little door you're gonna have some issues with it but one big plus for the Nero this week uh, the uh, climate control the heater inside of this Nero the cabin heat up pretty quickly uh, pretty rare for an electric car and uh, you can warm it up pretty quickly and then you, it doesn't take 15 to 20 minutes to warm up the cabin that's a big plus and also it affects less the range uh, that's a big plus if you're uh, driving the Nero uh, during winter time so the Nero EV is using an old technology obviously in our new EV world of 2022 when your technology is uh, three to four years old, it's an old technology. Um, from my point of view, uh, you know, I like that technology. It works well. It works well for me this week on a daily basis. But buying a Nero EV in 2022, I would probably wait for the new generation of the Nero and also maybe consider the Kia EV6, the brand new full electric Kia. Uh, this one seems uh, really interesting, more appealing, you know, style wise, interior wise, and all that. It looks more like a Mustang Mach E and all the other <laughs> electric cars coming on the market like the Volkswagen AD4 the new Subarus or the new Toyotas and all that they're all basically Mustang Mach-E's but the EV6 seems appealing and interesting so maybe before buying this Nero EV I would wait a little bit to check out the new generation or the EV6 uh, this seems a little bit more interesting so let me know in the comments what do you think about this Nero EV uh, is it interesting for you even if it's an old technology of batteries and all that let me know in the comments don't forget to subscribe like and share and we're gonna see each other on the next review